Their target was the Anbar, the Sunni areas. There were battles over there. Fallujah was destroyed twice, the Ramadi, everywhere. Now all of a sudden, we have the awakening working with the Americans, and the Americans are targeting the Shias. So the Americans once attacked the, the, the Sunnis, now they're attacking the Shia, but the Shias and the Sunnis are attacking each other. This should stop. All right, I'm going to take a question from the lady in the fourth row then, please. Thank you and good evening. Um, the media filters some of the elements of Islam in a way to make the religion overall look as if it was unpeaceful and violent, let alone the conflict between the two sects. Do you not believe that the media, media plays a big role in the escalation of the conflict? Professor Cole. Well, I mean, I think there's a difference between what we wish were the case and what actually is the case. We would, we would all wish that Muslims would live up to the ideals of their religion, which do promote social harmony. But they don't always, and they do sometimes organize themselves for violence against one another on religious grounds. And if you know that the Western media and uh, the, uh, a good deal of the Republican Party in the United States, very powerful forces, are gunning for the Muslims, are trying to make them look bad, then why would you give them the opportunity to divide and rule or to use Muslims against one another by engaging in this divisive behavior? Why don't the, 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 the Sunni and the Shiite uh, and the Kurdish Iraqis sit together and come to a solution that's not violent? Why, why, do, why do they keep invading each other's territory? Maybe you'd like to answer a couple of those questions since they were put Actually, directly back to you. may it not be that the, the violent manner that America came into Iraq, maybe <laughs> that encouraged the violence for, uh, amongst the Shiites and the Sunnis. Even if I granted your premise, the Muslims still have a, a, a responsibility. I mean, it's just like when, when you say to a child, if somebody jumped out of a window, would you follow him? These people uh, don't, have don't been have oppressed for, for these their people own have behavior? been oppressed for decades. You're from Iraq, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Dr. Uh, Halia. Well, I'd just like to point one thing out. We're saying why aren't the Sunnis and the Shiites getting together and forming coalitions within Iraq? Uh, I'm sorry, maybe I was reading different newspapers. Um, just this month, in at least two cities, they've been doing exactly that. They've been going on mass protests, mass demonstrations, saying we are Iraqis, Sunnis, and Shiites standing together. All right, we're going to take a question from the lady in the fourth row there. You have your hand up. This goes to Mr. Hisham. You said earlier that the extremes make up to 0.001 of the Islamic population. However, these people who are, getting, uh, who, are, who are getting our time on American news channel. What are the moderate of Muslims expected to do to get the proper exposure for Islam? There's a lot more, I think, that Sunnis and Shias and Muslims in general can do to promote themselves better. It's not enough, I think, anymore for people simply to go on the news channels uh, when they're invited, uh, which happens on a very regular basis. The Imam does this very often. Um, it's not enough that people do the things on the grassroots. This is very important because that's actually the real image on the ground. What they also have to do is create ways for them to be pushed onto those channels to take the attention away from the extremists because this is what the extremists thrive on. They thrive on being told, we have the power to define the conversation. We have the power to define what Islam is and what Islam isn't. Imam Kazwini, do you want to come in on this? I think the answer to that is to educate, uh, especially for Muslims who live in the West. I think they need to uh, hold teach-ins, open houses. They need to have outreach programs in which they can educate American non-Muslims about their religions. They need to run documentaries. In, in, in the media about Islam. I think the education is a key issue here that many Muslims are missing. I recall President, former President Clinton when he invited a few uh, uh, religious leaders to the White House in 1999 and I was among them. He said, I myself, I did not know much about Islam till my daughter Chelsea went to college and she took world-class religion and she used to come home and she would teach me and her mother Hillary about Islam. This shows that the average Americans lack basic knowledge about Islam, right. and that's why this, the, these negative images would feed okay. into their mind. Let, let me just ask Professor Cole, this avalanche of criticism of the media, is it justified here? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the Western media, uh, I, I don't know the scene outside the United States so well. 
uh, but uh, certainly in the United States. The news media made a decision in the early 1980s to go for infotainment. So there, uh, the, the, there are lots of serious telejournalists, but they are constrained. So we turn on to television. I remember recently there, there was a millenarian uh, outbreak of violence in Iraq. There were these people who believed that the promised one, the Mahdi, had come, and there was fighting in the streets of Basra and Nasiriyah. I turned on the U.S. Uh, cable news shows. There was nothing about it all day. There was not a mention of it. Uh, and what did they have on? You know, some starlet forgot to wear her underwear that day or something. I mean, it is really uh, tragic the degree to which the, the news media in the United States has declined into mere infotainment. So you both blame the media, but one thinks it hasn't damaged uh, Islam's reputation, and you think it has. Well, I think that, that because the media is sensationalistic, if you can show burning cars and damaged buildings and blood in the street and Sunnis and Shiites raising banners against one another, that plays into the infotainment and the sensationalism. But, you know, if, if, you, if you give them that opportunity, they will cover that kind of thing, and they have covered it quite intensively. And then it affects people's attitudes towards the Muslims. All right, this gentleman right at the back. We'll take your question, please. You've had your hand up. Yes, you. Uh, don't you believe that the conflict between uh, Shia and Sunni is uh, purely pol political? As religiously speaking, they have the same beliefs with a few simple differences in practice. These differences are, uh, have been used uh, by, politi uh, by politicians to create conflicts so that they can uh, achieve their objective, uh, divide to rule. Who would like to take that? I would like to. Imam Kazuini. Absolutely, it is political. Ask this simple question. Which one of these two sects, Sunnis or Shia, would permit killing innocent people? None. This means that what's happening in Iraq, killing innocent people, blowing up cars and uh, mosques, this does not belong to neither sects, neither uh, Shia or Sunnis, because both sects condemn these kinds of acts, and therefore I believe the conflict is political, not religious. All right, we're going to take a question from the lady in the fifth row then, please. Good evening. My question is directed to any of the speakers of the panel. Would simply the halt of bombings be sufficient in illustrating the peaceful image of Islam to the Western world? Thank you. Professor Cole, do you think? Well, a subsiding of violence in Iraq, generally speaking, would certainly uh, affect the image of, of Muslims in the United States because, as I said, those incidents of violence are covered uh, uh, especially, and one hears very little other news from Iraq, but how many people were killed today in such and such bombing. Uh, were uh, social peace to return to Iraq over time, I think that uh, people would start thinking differently about Muslims and Islam. Uh, yes, I agree with the proposition. Okay. Thank you. You wanted to say something quickly? Yeah, just something simple. Um, before Al-Qaeda, before bin Laden, before Sunni Shia conflict in Iraq, um, again, I have to say there was a large swathe of Western opinion that thought that Islam was a violent religion. It's very deep-rooted within uh, the way that, uh, that history is taught about the Muslim world in the West. Uh, this is unfortunate. This is something that needs to be changed, but it has to be done gradually and has to be done with the highest uh, standards of academic scholarship. We'll take a question from the third row, the lady there. Thank you. Um, actually, my question is to Dr. Hisham. You mentioned that extremists are more likely to get their time, you know, in media on television. Can you, okay, can you really say that that doesn't impact people who are watching the news? No, no, I totally agree with what you just said, but that's not really what I'm debating here tonight. I don't disagree that extremists on the airwaves contribute to a bad image of Islam. My, even uh, if they're my, Sunni and Shia extremists? Even if they're Sunni and Shia extremists, because the Sunni extremists attack the Sunnis just as often, if not more, than the Shia, and the Shia extremists attack the Shia just as often, if not more, than the Sunnis. But extremists, don't you feel what's happening right now with the Sunni and the Shias is perpetuating that negative view on Islam in terms of it not being I really don't, um, I really don't think peaceful? the viewers are sophisticated enough to know as much as you do uh, when, they watch the, when they watch the media. When they see an extremist, I disagree with all, you, and I think that's insulting people who watch, you know, who are 
I, I just disagree with you. I think that if you look at the polls, people really don't know the difference between a Sunni and a Shia. All they will see Whether is Whether they an not, extremist. though, but that's all they see. No, so but that's my point. All they see, all they put in terms of a 